It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. The scandal may be dying down over the potential conflict of interest faced by President Trump's Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke and his connection to his hometown Montana neighbor and the company Whitefish, the little known but two person energy company that received and then lost a 300 million contract to rebuild Puerto Rico's electrical grid. There may be other controversies around the corner for Mr. Zinke, but for the time being, he can enjoy his turkey on the ranch. Zinke fosters an image of a conservationist cowboy that is quickly fading as environmentalists and others are calling out his increasingly environmentally dangerous policies that seem to be in lockstep with Trump and his pro-fossil fuel agenda. With us to discuss Secretary Zinke's controversial actions in his role as a head of the Department of Interior, which also manages offshore ocean areas. Now I'm joined by Randy Spivak. She is the Public Lands Program Director at the Center for Biological Diversity. She's joining us today from Washington, D.C. Good to have you with us, Randy. Thank you so much for having me on. I should just say for transparency, part of this interview was actually recorded uh, earlier in the week, but there was a dog barking in the background, so we've had to redo it. So here we go. I've re-recorded the intro, but the question to uh, Randy remains the same, which is Trump's interior department under Zinke stewardship is proposing to shrink two national monuments in Utah, including the 1.3 billion acre bear years national monument, and opening up, they're also proposing to open up lands for potential industry use there. And then Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument is thought to contain over 60 billion tons of coal there, and the president expects to travel to Utah to announce this trimming of the National Monument in December. Randy, tell us what's at stake and also explain Zinke's role in all of this. Thanks for the question. There is so much going on. Um, let me just say, big picture, uh, you know, Secretary Zinke, who has purview over half of billion acres of our public lands um, and oceans as well, may uh, ride around in his cowboy hat and talk a very slick game about he loves public lands, but make no mistake, nobody should be fooled by Zinke. He is a great showman, and he and President Trump have just one goal, and that's to open up our public lands to even more drilling, fracking, coal mining, and livestock grazing. So the monuments fight is really emblematic of the bigger picture here, just front and center right now with national monuments. So I think uh, your viewers might remember that back in April, President Trump opened up a so-called review of over 27 monuments starting back 20 years ago. Zinke sent in his recommendations to Trump, which he never revealed, but were made public through week to the press. And what President Trump just announced is that he is going to follow that we know of at least two of the recommendations. And that would be to dramatically shrink, reduce the size of Bears Ears and Grand Staircase Escalante in Utah, as well as strip protections for what is left. The impact of this is quite significant. For folks not familiar with the Antiquities Act, this is one of the oldest and most important conservation laws that we have. It was signed by President Roosevelt back in 1906. And Congress passed that law. And what that law did was give presidents the express authority to designate as national monuments on lands that are already publicly owned a higher conservation status to protect objects of historic and scientific interest. So what does this mean? The Grand Canyon, for example, uh, one of our most iconic national parks started out as a national monument. Uh, to protect this amazing canyon, uh, arches. In fact, half of our national parks, Bryce, Acadia, all started out as national monuments designated by the president. 
The reason Congress gave the president the authority is because Congress at the time understood that it could not uh, or would not pass legislation to protect individual places on public lands. And so by giving the president the authority, they acknowledge that presidents need to have this authority to move swiftly to protect some of our most magnificent and iconic places. So the fact that Trump is going to, we don't know the details yet of how many acres they will shrink these two monuments and likely others, but it's going to be significant. And what that means is that these places that are now protected from drilling, fracking, coal mining, that they will then be open to the highest bidders from corporate polluters. All right. And uh, are we seeing attacks on other national monuments and public parks in the same way? We are. Uh, first, Zinke's recommendations to Trump recommended that four national monuments be severely uh, reduced in size, and that would also be Gold Butte in Nevada and Cascade Siskiyou Wildlands in Oregon, with a little bit in California. And in addition to shrinking those uh, four boundaries, the recommendations from Zinke to President Trump called for slashing protections. So whatever is left as a national monument, they also called for slashing protections on 10 more, uh, including Katahdin Woods in Maine. Oregon Mountains, Desert Peaks, and the Rio Grande del Norte in New Mexico, and opening up three marine monuments, uh, the Northeast Canyons and Seamounts in the Atlantic, and the Pacific Remote Islands and Rose Atoll in the South, South Pacific. And those monuments, uh, marine monuments, protect wonderful marine mammals, whales, tortoises, from industrial commercial fishing. And so Trump is also going after those as well. This is an unprecedented attack on any measure. Never seen anything like this before in history. Randy, uh, Senate recently voted on, to open the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge for oil and gas exploration and drilling. This has been, of course, a 40-year battle, I understand. Lots of people have been pushing and, and, uh, and you know, trying to have this area protected. Now, how quickly might the Trump administration move on these kinds of protected uh, lands? They can move pretty quickly once a bill is put on his desk to sign, but uh, I guarantee you there will be litigation against doing so. Uh, by the way, people should know that Senator Lisa Murkowski from Alaska and Representative Don Young in the House from Alaska are the major pushers behind this initiative, um, as well as oil and gas companies. And so I think the Alaska delegation is clearly looking to President Trump to do their bidding for so many iconic lands in Alaska, not just the refuge. But this would be an unmistakable tragedy to get at very uh, oil and gas in terms of just a couple of years, the trade-off for that, to open up the refuge, which is home to uh, iconic wildlife, uh, not to mention the climate, global warming implications of getting us deeper and deeper in the hole in terms of locking us into more fossil fuel production is just unthinkable. Yeah. Speaking of more fossil fuel production, the Interior Department also manages the offshore public territories, and they recently announced a massive expansion of offshore drilling, uh, including the Gulf of Mexico, where the BP disaster had occurred. Um, give us a sense of what um, uh, this might do. I mean, not only are they opening this up, also regulation is uh, disappearing before our eyes as well. So basically, uh, a lot of what Trump is doing right now is undoing what President Obama did. And so the Gulf drilling, they would auction off, open up to auction for drilling, 70 million acres uh, off the coast in the Gulf. And companies like BP, Shell, those are the ones who then could bid on the contracts and our future would be entrusted to them. There's no way we can trust these companies. BP, after the Gulf, uh, the BP oil spill, one of the greatest disasters in American history, 
Uh, why would we trust, you know, our waters, marine life, and our climate to these companies? That's basically what Trump is proposing that we do. Instead of opening up more oceans and our public lands to fossil fuel drilling, we need to end new expansion of fossil fuels if we want to avoid climate disaster and really ramp up renewable energy. And Randy, um, of course, all of this is being done under the auspices of creating jobs. And we know that the fossil fuel industry, um, you know, obviously needs to make a just transition into clean jobs and uh, clean economy and try to train people in these uh, fossil fuel industries to take up you know, jobs that are safer for them and safer for the environment. Um, how justified is this argument on the part of the Trump administration? It, it's completely unjustified. I mean, let's face it. There are more jobs in renewable energy that could be had that are outpacing the oil and gas industry. And not only that, when we look to the future, we want jobs that make our environment cleaner, and safer. With fossil fuel drilling jobs, we also get an increase in childhood asthma and, and communities that live right next to uh, fracking sites. We know that there are tremendous health impacts. So what we need are not more jobs in an energy sector that is dirty and will take us backwards and actually harm our health and future prospects, but jobs in clean energy sector. And we could lead the world in that technology. And it said Trumping is dragging us back. So don't buy into the industry's arguments about jobs. We can do it a lot better and a lot more jobs on the renewable front. And Trump is portraying all of this rolling back of safety regulations and environmental regulations in the name of energy dominance. And make no mistake, he, he just opened up, we just got another report which says uh, that after reviews of what each a uh, federal agency sees as a burden to the energy industry for more fracking, drilling, and mining. How about the burden to the people on the planet? How about the burden to our health and our safe climate future? Trump is only looking at things through the narrow, narrow, narrow uh, lens of corporate profit. Randy, I thank you so much for joining us and uh, enlightening us about uh, the implications of all of this to our environment and health. Um, I thank you for the work you're doing and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, really appreciate the opportunity. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.